Oh, and of course, among the racers, how could I forget J.J. Schmidt 77? I knew it was... It's like trying to name the seven dwarves. You get partway through and you tend to forget one here. But we are getting things started and the instructions are going the way of our runners. And we're going to see what those first three items are. I see wings. And we have the death necklace, the wings, and the obligatory magic key to get them out of there. But if they use the wings, oh, they can just head on out and they can save that key to be used for other things along the way here. But I think Centroid wants that immediate treasury trying to open the chest like a door, but eh, just open it normally and take your herb and your torch and your dragon scale. And I missed the fourth one. Uh, that would be some big bucks. So that does put a gold grind into play somewhere down the road, and we'll uh, explain more about that as we go along here. But uh, yes, the uh, the dragon scale, once it's put on, as Centroid has just done, well, that will add two defense points to your total, and Centroid using that defense and is going to try to fight one of the lower-level enemies here in... The Red Slime. Our runner's trying to get to level 2. Well, they're trying to increase their levels as much as possible. As level 2 is attained by getting 5 experience. Of which Centroid has 2. And a tie-dye guy finding out that Red Slimes have hurt. That's not fun. Oof. Also, Poltergeist for Smashy. And Centroid has to be careful. Ooh. Everyone has Radiant and Heal more to start. Nice. That is a uh, yeah, good thing to get right off the bat. So two of the ten spells already acquired in level one. Also, there is the experience boost to the next level. New spell learned. Hurt. All right, so that's some added offense to go along the way here. Now, based off of that increase, it looks like we had a strength increase of, I think, 2, HP of 1, maybe agility of 4, but, you know, having that spell hurt does help with certain enemies, so this is at least a good start. Yeah, it definitely is, and also of note, Sherlock Castle, the uh, place to access, is very, very close to Tantagel Castle. In fact, it just takes a little bit of a, uh, a jaunt through the swamp here, off to the south and west. And there's a lot of swamp all over the place here. Hmm. I solemnly swear that I did not roll with the big swamp option. It's just all concentrated kind of around the castle, and... Let's see here. We've got Metal Scorpions with the Hurt spell, and Tilo Tilo getting a little, a uh, little adventurous in his exploration, and not enough hit points to survive the swamp. Centroid had just found, I believe, the Stones of Sunlight Cave. Just got some fairy water, but now is actually in a dungeon or a cave. This looks like, let's see, East only Mountain Cave. Yes, yeah, so there are five treasure chests to be found here, but the Star Wyvern says, nope, you'll have to find them later. Well, how about what is inside, uh, the back of Tangidil Castle? Tilo Tilo choosing to not use Radiant. And that's making me struggle to figure out what this is, but I'm not seeing any enemies come up yet, so this could be Erdrick's cave, or Erdrick's tomb. No! Uh, yeah, it does look like he is trying to navigate it in the dark, but no, that's, uh, that actually would be the swamp cave. He just happened to luckily not encounter any enemies along the way. Until that ghost showed up out of nowhere. 
All right, level three, power by one, speed four, HP 14, magic two, and we have both outside and repel now available. So. That Drakima chose to ruin it though. So the, uh, the death count is uh, pretty easy along the way, and uh, DW Edit with a question in chat, is Red Slime the only easy monster in the area? And by easy, uh, he means hurt. Uh, well, theoretically, in the zone right around Tangential Castle, it's a 15 by 15 grid, although the castle isn't necessarily in the center of it, uh, there are any of the first, I believe it's seven enemies that are in the game, are available and accessible. Although it's generally five of those that uh, can theoretically tend to appear. And that could be the slime, the red slime, the drakey, the ghost, the magician, the magic drakey, or the scorpion. Now we already saw not too far around the castle there, both the tie-dye guy and smashy encountering some magic drakeys. And that seems to be a sound strategy going forward here. Smashy hoping to take out enough red slimes, but... With all these hurts, he thought he could get ahead, but apparently not for thou art dead. Oof. And meanwhile, ooh, uh, Centroid using his herb to, to heal, I guess, because he... Oh, well, he doesn't have enough MP to use uh, heal more. Now, has Smashy used the key to go to the treasury yet? No, he's just used it to head over to what we now know as Swamp Cave. Well, if nothing else, it's for exploration, and then if he doesn't like what he finds, or if he takes a death, he can just reset. Ooh, level 5, you get 23 magic points. Oh well, good, a plethora of magic points to use all those spells learned early on. Yeah, so far, this is a decently healthy seed. Though the droll is trying to make it not so healthy. DW Edit asks, does Smashy have Radiant? All of our runners have Radiant and Heal More at the start, yes. However, I don't know if Smashy has uh, checked his spell menu yet. The tie-dye guy has gone into the stone cave, picked up some fairy water. And Centroid is trying to do a little grinding in the desert. And Smashy has found a Star Wyvern, and the Star Wyvern says you're going to reset now. And the Metal Scorpion takes out Centroid. Ouch. Alright, the Tie-Dye Guy is in... I believe... Yeah, that's still Mountain Cave. Now, this is interesting here. Tilo Tilo was able to acquire enough gold to pick up some more magic keys. So now he's got the uh, he's got that exploration going on here. So he can access those rather freely. The tie-dye guy is in the mountain cave. And we're going to see what the first of the five treasures is. And it's the fighter's ring. So what that will do is once it is put on, it will add two attack points to your total but ooh, slept and wreck is wrecked is the tie-dye guy after uh the star wyvern ooh, very powerful enemy one of the i'd say eight toughest enemies in the game with sleep not a good thing at an early level not really smashy is still struggling 
against the Red Slimes in Zone 1 here. Finally takes one out, but needs to take out one more. But this Magic Drake is not going to make things easy. And just running. None of our runners have a weapon yet, so we may have to just consider either fighting or searching. New spells at level 6, and they went by too quickly on Centroid's side. Double checking the other end. Went too fast over there for me, too. <laughs> Chad, do you know what... Well, the one of them is hurt more. I can see that much. So that's going to really open things up here at level 6. Well, hurt more is the key spell to track, so... Oh, I think that Star Wyvern heard hurt more and chose to deliver some pain on his own. He did, and Smashy getting to level two. Here at about the 11 minute mark of this race. Well, having hurt should be a boost in confidence, and, uh, well, just like that, moving to level three. And it looks like Heal was also acquired at level 6. Thank you again for catching that, Firon. Now, uh, did the, did the Tag Dai guy uh, equip the Fighter's Ring? I did not catch that. Uh, yeah, I, hmm. Now I believe he did, but now you got me second-guessing myself here. As meanwhile, Centroid quickly going up to level 7 with a power boost of 5. Zero hit points, four magic points, and no agility. Uh, MDI somewhere is enjoying that level, as uh, he uh, rather, <laughs> I guess, rather sadistically enjoys the minimal gains. Wait, wait, why would the game advertise when you gain nothing? Uh, probably to troll. The tie-dye guy... Oh, I thought that was a level up. Never mind. Instead, it's the enemies casting hurt more. My apologies. More Star Wyverns on Centroid side. But they are not going down to one hurt more. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Kind of depends on their mood, I guess. Or what they had for breakfast that day, or whatever the case may be. Alright, I have the cheat sheet. If you want me to tell you, I probably can. <laughs> uh, nah, I, I, I like surprises. Very well. Knowledge stays hidden for now. However, I will say that Tilo Tilo did get a level up. And is going to enjoy that level up, as that's going to be the level 6 that's noted here. And a gold man, meanwhile, for Centroid. And Smashy... Hmm. Looks to be stuck on having defeated the Red Slime. That is strange. Uh... I'm not familiar with this sort of stop spell. Especially since it hasn't been learned yet. Meanwhile, ooh, Centroid encountering a stone man that has the baby dragon breath. We are nearly 15 minutes in, and we still I still haven't seen any runners with any shields, weapons, or armor. This is kind of dangerous right now. Y you have to wonder where the nearest town is. That's hopefully not Hawksness. Well, right now they're uh, 
they're making Ray Stevens happy and they're all doing the streak at this point as uh, all they've got on is a ring and a scale and nothing else to show for it. Ooh, and Demon Knights have sleep also. Ouch. All right. Demon Knight is one of the top ten most difficult. Centroid is in the mountain cave. Fortunately, only runs into a regular wyvern. I see a level up gain on Centroid's side. 29 power, 3 speed, 2 hit points, and 1 ag agility. 29 attack power, get wrecked. Look at that, 50 strength here in the early going at level 8. And the Fighter's Ring, oh, it's going to attack on 2 more, so that'll put him up to 52. So a decent amount of power, and... On top of it, uh, having heal more and hurt more. Oh, and there's the Drakies. Okay. Meanwhile, the tie-dye guy has found... Hawk's, Hawk's Nest. Nest. <laughs> I had missed where exactly, though. Does contain a Magic Wyvern, but Magic Wyverns are not a problem right now. And that gets him to level 7. Folks, I'm going to attempt to reboot Smashy's in, so please hang on. Alright, meanwhile, uh, Centroid is navigating the mountain cave and has gotten the... Oh, wow. It looks like the mountain cave is plentiful for items here. I just m missed part of it, but was that the Stones of Sunlight? That was the Stones of Sunlight. Also in there was the Silver Harp, the Fairy Flute, a Fairy Water, and the Fighter's Ring, as we had discussed earlier. Whew. Yeah, very plentiful. So the, the Flute, that's a, a good item to have. But what that'll mean is one of these search spot items, either in Hawk's Nest, in the Town of Coal, or the normal Overworld spot, one of the three of those will be will bring up nothing. Bupkus. Alright, stay tuned, folks. I am going to bring up a new featured runner because this is next generation level of stop spell that Smashy is affected with. Well, in the interim, Tilo Tilo doing, taking the long way to the Silver Harp, but uh, Tilo has the, uh, the Silver Harp in play. Now, our runners, they're going to be looking for, as I mentioned, three items. Now, the Silver Harp is one of them, and they will be finding a cave along the way where they will exchange that for the Staff of Rain. And then the combination of the Staff of Rain, the Stones of Sunlight, and Erdrick's Token, those will all be traded in for the Rainbow Drop. All right, Firon, it may look a little strange for just a moment for you, but I... I... Oh, hang on. I'm Wait, so it's Smashy has returned. Just in the nick of time, too. Maybe he heard that you were taking him out of feature. <laughs> Restreamer's curse? I don't know. Hey, why not? We're making up new things as we go along here. So Centroid... Back into... Uh, looks like he's found a, a, another cave here. It looks like this is Garen's Grave. So, five more chests to be found, although two of them are behind locked doors and uh, considerably deeper here. But Centroid going to find three more searchable items here. And Wizards have sleep as well. And Hurt. Ooh, the Wyvern with a snipe attack here. So, Centroid going to have to... Heal after this. Smashy, meanwhile, going to purchase a key or two. I'll actually make it a key. And Centroid casting Hurt More on nobody. Can't tell you how many times I've done that here. 
And let's see what the first three chests are. So we've got some big bucks. We've got a magic key. And some more big bucks. And Centroid opting to not go deeper into Garen's grave. Perhaps going to come back to that later or perhaps skip it and hope that it's not anything important down there. The tie-dye guy has found Breconary and is purchasing some chainmail. Well, I'll admit, they are some low... the lower end of the spectrum of weapons and armory, but hey, every little bit helps as the tie-dye guy also picking up the club. And a level up for level 9, that... If I saw that right, 21 HP and 10 or 11 MP. 11 MP, that is correct. So some pretty beefy hit point and magic point gains. And Centroid has found Breconary. And is going to stay at the end, the cheapest end in the game. Uh, it is uh, just six gold to refresh all your hit points and magic points. And the tie-dye guy getting not blood from a stone, but fire from a stone in this case, as the breathing fire sends him back to town. And Tilo Tilo picking up the trifecta of chests at the top of Garen's grave. A couple of gold bits and a magic key. And we've got the club and chain mail on Centroid's side as well. Uh, oh, Smashy has run into a Star Wyvern and Magician has Dragonlord Breath, I believe. Yes, he does. And the Red Dragon, known by the community as the Fun Police, has sleep in this seed. I rolled an interesting one. Now, the reason that the Red Dragon is known as the Fun Police is because generally when they show up, fun tends to stop, as they are the uh, the strongest, one of the strongest enemies in the game that isn't the Dragon Lord, also one of the fastest. And add that to the sleep spell, it is very easy to get potentially get slept and wrecked. Alright, Smashy is now back in Garen's grave. So, Centroid loading up on keys, and the tie-dye guy getting slept and wrecked by the Demon Knight. Uh, by my me... count, that's already five enemies with sleep spell. Okay, I'll admit, that's a little much. And all encountered here in the early game, too. As uh, Smashy now getting up to level 5, and Centroid restocking in the treasury. But not quite in a position to utilize the gold grind. Now, I had mentioned that earlier, and I'll uh, go ahead and explain that, because I did say I was going to get to it later, and now seems as good a time as any. So, chests, as you've seen, respawn every time you go to the overworld map and then come back. Uh, however, due to the programming limits of the, at the time the game was made, the game only tracks up to eight chests as opened, for lack of a better term. So every chest opened beyond that eighth chest can be taken over and over again. And usually it's done by taking at least two chests from a cave, which uh, theoretically Smashy could do here, since he took the three in Garen's grave. And then death warping back to Tangel Castle, and in the King's Throne Room there, it, the other three chests that are in there are permanently marked as opened, so that you don't keep opening those over and over again. And then you would go to the treasury and open two chests in there, and then the third chest in the treasury, that would be the ninth overall chest, and you can just keep taking that over and over again, and our racers can and theoretically could do that. And keep getting anywhere between 500 to 750 gold over and over and over again. And by doing that, they'll take advantage of the opportunity to get very powerful equipment, such as the Flame Sword, the second best sword in the game at 28 attack power. 
the full plate or magic armor, they give you a plus 24 defense. And the silver shield, the best shield in the game, they give a plus 20 defense. Nicely done. Centroid just took out a wolf. Tilo Tilo is taking out another wolf. The tie-dye guy is, has just gotten some more gold. And Smashy is ready to explore the world again. And now I see what you're uh, referencing here as far as uh, as far as the chat here. So Shubinator uh, noting that, uh, that yeah, apparently I sound a lot like uh, one of the runners here in the game, uh, Jackamus Wedge, although he is Canadian. And while I do have Canadian blood in me, I am here from the States. Uh, but yeah, apparently that uh, I would be the one who apparently sounds like Jackamus. The, uh, almost like the Canadian Randall from Clerks is uh, the best way to describe Jackamus's voice. I still haven't seen that. Oh, did we take note that the Drakima ca can cast sleep? Oh, they have sleep as well. Goodness, all right, that is six enemies with sleep so far. Well, hopefully Tilo Tilo will get some voluntary rest in coal, at least after checking the search spot. Which this time around is Erdrick's token. One of the essentials in the game. And apparently I had missed Tilo Tilo had picked up the fighter's ring, but has immediately dropped it. So I need a reminder on mechanics. If you equip the fighter's ring, but then drop it, do you permanently gain the stats? Uh, that is correct. That is something that was a bit of a bug from the programming of the game is once you equip it, you keep the benefits even if you toss the ring, and the same thing with the dragon scale. Very well, I will presume that Tilo Tilo has already equipped it then. Yeah, whenever he does a stat check, if you look and see that the uh, there's a slight difference between the uh, the strength and uh, yeah, the, the strength and the uh, the, uh, the uh, attack power, then that'd be the, uh, the clue or tip off that uh, that, that the ring was equipped. But we'll, we'll, I'll do those calculations uh, as I come across it here, as Tilo Tilo, now it looks like, yeah, three of our runners at level nine here, Smashy just a little bit away here, and is going to get to level six and be able to catch up here as Centroid now gets to level ten, with no power, 11 speed, 11 hit points, and 3 magic points. As Tilo Tilo is taking on the boss of Hawk's Nest, it looks like the Axe Knight. Oh, so he's going for Hurtmore, hoping to one-shot it, and it isn't enough, but he is able to survive. So he's going for the Hurt spell, interesting, and that's going to be enough to take it out. So not, he's going to get the 130 experience. It's going to get him up to level 10. And then we're going to see what the search spot item is in Hawk's Nest. What search item? And there's nothing! Exactly. What search item? We may have to find Cantlin, folks. Uh, well, that, I was going to say, based on the process of elimination, that is not a might, that is a we will, as the Erdrick's armor by process of elimination is going to be in that overworld search spot. In the meantime, I believe I did see that tie-dye guy get the Stones of Sunlight, just barely. But, on the bright side, that uh, that spot in Hawk's Nest, that is going to be a great grind spot for our players, as that's probably one of the easiest enemies, and oh gosh, Red Dragons with Hurt more as well as Sleep. Also, I had missed Tilo Tilo picking up the Silver Harp, but uh, apparently has it, because there's the Staff of Rain. Uh, yes, Tilo Tilo did get that inside of the mountain cave. Now, I don't know if he got all the way to where the stones are. We'll I check didn't... that next time the items come into play. And now Centroid's going to go and pick up his staff of rain. Yeah. So level 10 now for the tie-dye guy. 
as Smashy gets obliterated by an armored knight, known in the community as the AK-47. Because it hits just as hard as one. Centroid is now in Hawk's Nest, while Tilo Tilo, I think that's Erdrick's grave. Uh, yeah, the Tablet Cave, as it's also known. Uh, there are no enemies in this particular uh, in this particular area here, so it's just a quick walk as ooh, the Red Dragon's sleeping and wrecking Centroid. And we've got the Curse Belt, which Tilo Tilo is going to pass up. Okay, who who chose to raid Erdrick's grave and put a uh, useless thing in there? Your guess is as good as mine, and oh, there's the Metal Scorpions using their Sleep and Hurt combo. Metal Slimes with Hurt. Uh-oh, Tilo Tilo has found the Red Dragon. He tries to get away, and he gets slept. And Gets wrecked. hit with a Hurt more. <laughs> and wrecked. Well, Smashy trying to give it a go here at the Metal Slime, and he defeats it. Nice. That's going to give him the maximum experience, 255, and that's going to shoot him on up to level 7. And it's pr pretty close to halfway to level 8 already. So, Centroid now, I briefly saw that he's got the Broadsword. Might have picked that up in coal. Wait, broadsword or copper sword? Uh, broadsword. Okay, hopefully I have marked it correctly now. Time to take out that Axe Knight. Axe Knight is taken out. And Centroid has learned the horrible truth. However... Token, I mean, maybe it, it might not be a bad idea to kind of grind on this a little bit. And that's exactly what Centroid's going to do. Figure usually, I mean, the majority of the time, it's a one shot of the Hurt More and it gets you an instant 130 experience. And, I mean, he's already got, I mean, he's only two away from getting to level 11. Meanwhile, the tie-dye guy purchasing the large shield in Garenham. And upgrading the club to a copper sword. But I'm more curious about what's in the three chests, as well as the... Wait, one other cave we haven't found yet. Jerk cave. And, so we've oh! got a magic key. We've got Erdrick's sword. The tie dye guy wasted the money without and realizing it. So Erdrick's sword, the best sword in the game. Giving you 40 attack power on top of your strength. And in the back of Garenham is the Rainbow Drop Cave, affectionately known as the Jerk Cave. I was hoping I was wrong on that for the record. Reason why we call it the Jerk Cave around here. If you do not have the Staff of Rain, the Stones of Sunlight, and Erdrick's token, and you attempt to talk to him, guy's a jerk and immediately kicks you out. Yeah, he is mean like that. He's even more forcible if you don't have... Specifically, it's the token. If you don't have the token, then he forces you out. But otherwise, he just says, I have no business with you, or thou have failed, and go away, and other things of that nature. Both Centroid and TO2 are at level 11. I don't recall seeing any new spells from 7 to 11. That is correct. And we have the Armored Knight... Wrecking Centroid and Smashy getting wrecked by the Swamp and Tilo Tilo getting wrecked by a Star Wyvern and the Tie-Dye Guy. Well, he's in Cantlin. He is not getting wrecked. In 
instead, he's getting equipped. Well, maybe not from that store. No, no upgrades at that store, necessarily. Wait, it, he's spending a key... Right, I forget you can purchase keys in this place. Yeah, I mean, they're pricey. They're almost 100 gold a piece. But, I mean, that's what you get when you're in the shopping mall of Alephgard, known as Cantlin. As there are three different weapon and armor shops here. Ooh, Silver Shield find! Yeah, that best shield in the game, but you see, and I told you about things being expensive, 14,800 gold, just a little out of the tie-dye guy's price range at the moment. However, we're now going to gain some knowledge. That, uh, wizard you see, s surrounded by the herd tiles, he gives coordinates. Follow those coordinates, and we will find Erdrick's armor. Magic That's coordinates good. today. <laughs> Oh boy, 52 North, 85 West. Yeah, so that's going to be a lot of counting, but that also more than likely means that we might have a rescued princess after all. Yes, the Princess Gwalin is trapped in the Swamp Cave. Once you rescue her, she will literally cling on to you until you take her back home to Tangajil Castle. Once you do that, though, Gwalin effectively becomes the Gwalin Positioning System, or GPS for short, where she will tell you how far away you are from her. So yes, it's, the Gwalin. it's the opposite of the coordinates that we just learned from the tie-dye guy. The t that tie-dye guy side. Yes, uh, what, what ends up happening is you get an item in your inventory known as Gwalen's Love, and she will tell you how much experience you need to get to the next level, as well as where your position is in relation to the castle. Or actually, more accurately, she will tell you where she is in relation to you. So she will tell you where the castle is in relation to where you're standing, because as, her, as she is so eloquently known, uh, it is, uh, it's all about her with her butt-down musts and everything of that nature. So eh, she's a little selfish in that regard. So it all revolves around her. So I am in relation to where, you know, to, to your position. That That's what she's essentially saying. So you have to flip the, uh, flip the cardinal directions on that to be able to determine where you are in relation to the castle. Still, as clingy and affectionate she is, if we want that armor, we're going for it. Well, going for her, right. I should say. Yep, so presuming that they're going to do that, then once they get north and west of the castle at a pretty uh, lengthy clip, then she will tell you that she is 52 south and 85 east of where you are. And the tie-dye guy is already in the swamp cave to potentially retrieve her. But there is a guardian enemy. But Wait. it looks like he is passing it up and just beelining through to the bottom of the cave. Interesting. Uh, the tie-dye guy? You can't purchase Erdrick's armor. It is on the overworld. I mean, unless you happen to know where you end up at the other side of Swamp Cave? Which, admittedly, may be possible. I don't know how separated the two continents are, but... I don't... I don't understand this play, Firon. Uh, if, you, if you have the coordinates, and you know that they are far away, why would you pass up on rescuing Princess Gwalin. Well, I don't believe that the tie-dye guy has found coal yet, so I think he is looking for coal to see if the armor is in the search spot. Ah. Because that would be a lot easier than having to trek 52 north and 85 west of the castle. That is, admittedly, a very good point. 
But it looks like he's not going to get that far as the Demonite has slept and wrecked the tie-dye guy with the wombo combo of sleep and hurt more. These enemies are relentless today. And Pyrolite noting in chat, uh, but thou must, no escape, but thou must. Almost a little hybrid of Dragon Warrior and Final Fantasy VI, I believe. Or is it seven? I get the two mixed up with the no escape. I know it's so six. Good. Yep, my initial assertion was right. That's right, it is six with the, the Phantom Train. That's right, it's rattling around in my head there somewhere. Now, as far as what chat must do, but thou must follow our runners, as they are certainly giving us a good show while trying to deal with these enemies. And... That is a fantastic <laughs> segue. But thou must also follow Firon Burgundy for providing much better commentary than me. In fairness, I do have a bit of an experience edge in that regard. I mean, I've been... In real life, I am an on-air radio personality and have been for the last decade, so... Eh, I don't want to necessarily be compared to because it's an unfair comparison. Alright, the tie-dye guy is back in Swamp Cave, and I believe... Is the Armored Knight the Guardian? I'll admit I didn't see it. It'll be interesting if that is the case. And it is. it is. The Armored Knight is in the Spike Tile. Alright, Tilo Tilo is about to get Erdrick's sword, and the tie-dye guy is about to get love. And there is the sword. It is strange to see Link carrying the princess, and it's not even the right princess. Level 12 for Centroid. Power by 19, and at least one new spell. Stop spell. So that's now 8 out of the 10 spells here at level 12, so 2 more to learn within the next 4 levels. Yep. Those being Sleep and Return. Alright, the tie-dye guy has officially received Gwalen's Love, had to give up the Dragon Scale for it, but I'm pretty sure the equipped stats still take hold at this point. They most certainly do. And you can see already for Tilo, Tilo, 114 attack power. So strength, certainly not an issue, at least eh, this far into the early going. How much attack power did you say again? Uh, 114. So... For some reason, I was expecting uh, less strength than that. I need to double check uh, Tilo Tilo's levels on the next battle. Or, oh, that's why. He is on level 12. Yep, he's on level 12. He's got Erdrick's sword. He's got the, uh, the fighter's ring. So it should be his strength plus 42. Yep, I, I had missed the level up. Thank you for catching that. No worries, and Centroid has found Rimmeldar, which since keys were found pretty early, it's kind of a moot point, but inside we've got some big bucks. So the thing about the stats that I'm talking about, uh, on your screen now, you will actually see the current stats, assuming that they are all calculated correctly. <laughs> this will come in handy once we actually make our dive into Sherlock Castle. It will definitely help with a lot of calculations, that is for sure. The 
Smashy heading on over to the pair of towns here. So he's going to head on into Cole and momentarily will get himself the Erdrix token. Meanwhile, Centroid meandering around in the swamp. I just real Assuming that I've been tracking this right, Centroid actually has all three items. The only one I may be unsure about is the stones, but I'm pretty sure I saw those stones uh, acquired. Which actually Well, the makes... stones were the last item in the mountain cave, so if Tilo Tilo didn't get all the way in or died before getting to that last chest, it could be possible that the stones are not in his inventory. So the tie-dye guy is in Garenham, staying at the inn. Already and has so Erdrick's sword. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, just saying it's Centroid taking out an armored knight. Ah. Alright, Tilo Tilo is hoping for good stuff here. Full plate not interested and centroid was that an intentional swamp death i think so because i'm sure if the uh yeah i think his plan was to get back to the castle also for those that want to see the Gwalen positioning system in action focus on the tie-dye guy's s screen right now he is using it every so often right now to figure out where he needs to be. And the ironic thing is, apparently, Erdrick's armor is right by Cantlin. Someone chose to bury it near there as a practical joke, almost as if you have to double dip the place. Unless you had the foresight to rescue the princess first and then get the coordinates, but very seldom, if ever, do you see that in this type of scene. And Smashy, uh, as noted in chat by Pyrelight, just met the Fun Police, and they do what Fun Police do. And that's uh, the Red Dragon, in this case, probably sleeping and wrecking. Yep. Centroid is now in the Swamp Cave, about to rescue Princess Gwalen. But first, the Armored Knight. Okay, the tie-dye guy 50, is close. 58 and 80, so... Gonna move a little bit further into the swamp. Oh, Tilo Tilo has now met the fun police, as everyone is calling. And strangely enough, if from what I remember a little bit ago, I think it was Centroid that had taken the intentional uh, er, intentional death in the swamp. I believe that was not too far from where Erdrick's armor was. Smashy has gained level 10 and nothing else. However, choosing to fight the Axe Knights again. And a tie-dye guy did successfully search the Erdrick's armor, so he does have that in play. So that's I... now the best armor in the game and the best sword in the game. I did miss that pickup. Thank you for catching that. And Centroid checking the stats and everything here. It looks like Sleep was acquired at level 13. So that just leaves Return, which can also be, uh, which sends the racers back to Tanagel Castle. In lieu of the Return spell, they can also use the Wings. And, aw, we have both Centroid and Tilo Tilo rescuing Princess Gwalen almost simultaneously. How adorable. 
But thou musts in stereo. Oh, 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 the magic drakey is trying to prevent the reunion, but that's not gonna happen. Yeah, Tila Tila not even bothering to smash at it, just like, get, get out of my way. And just that quickly, it looks like Smashy is up to level 11. As he just broke past the 2175 mark to get to level 11 in terms of experience. Both Tilo Tilo and the Tie-Dye Guy, they're looking for level 13. They have to get to 4125 to do so. And Centroid, who just got to level 13, he's looking for an additional, at this point, roughly 1,271 experience, if I'm doing the math in my head quickly, to get to the target number of 5,625. Now, the number that I am more curious about, I think is going to be closer to around 130. That is the number of attack power that I think our runners would feel more comfortable having by the time they face the Dragon Lord in Sherlock Castle. Generally, I believe that the bare minimum, uh, with, without making it a marathon fight, uh, is usually about 128. That anything lower than that, and it's kind of, uh, you're, you're just buzzing around the Dragon Lord like a fly. Or worse, she had a gnat. Now, I know that there was a resource that, I guess, simulated how likely you could survive a Dragon Lord to attack. But I'm having trouble finding it because I actually kind of want to project... Uh, make some projections based off of current stats and, you know, hopeful level up gains. Well, we'll see as we go along. I think our runners uh, still have a bit of defense to acquire, and uh, looking at Tilo Tilo, I think since he is back in the mountain cave, perhaps has realized, oh man, I've got to get all the way to that end thing so I can get these stones of sunlight, so... My initial theory that Tilo Tilo did not make it all the way to that last chest looks to be correct. Indeed, you are right. Bye bye, Dragon Scale. We hardly knew ye. And the tie dye guy heading up to level 13 with that nice response speed and magic point boost. And the tie-dye guy is now in a uh, fashion cave. <laughs> I only call yeah, it... Yeah, so he's going to get his belt and ignore it. And, ooh, Smashy trying to get away from the red dragon. And the red dragon says, I'm going to cast Hurt More on you. Thankfully, having the spell of outside, that saves a little bit of time, and Wyverns with heal, heal more. This is not a, a very friendly set for enemies. It's kind of ridiculous now that I think about it. Yeah, enemies are a little on the brutal side, absolutely. And Centroid has found Garenham time to get that all-important Erdrick sword. Meanwhile, the tie-dye guy is trading in the Silver Heart for the Staff of Rain. Centroid is just immediately ignoring that chest, but for good reason. Centroid has practically everything necessary, including the all-important rainbow drop. Or at least he will in a moment. Now the sun and the rain shall meet, and the rainbow drop has been acquired. So Centroid can utilize that rainbow drop in the bridge 
over the troubled water into Charlotte Castle and theoretically could start to go after the Dragon Lord, but eh, it still needs a little bit of power to gain. Yeah, with the uh, Airdrick Sword and the current level ups, Centroid has 114 attack power. Looking for at least 14 more, but definitely wants higher if possible. Yeah, if Centroid were to go down to take on the second form of the Dragon Lord now, every swipe of the sword. Golly, would be anywhere between three and seven hit points. And as we mentioned in the beginning, the Dragon Lord has anywhere between 150 to 165. All right. The tie-dye guy now has the token, and Tilo Tilo now has the rainbow drop as well. And Smashy, well, found the Staff of Rain Cave, but that would require getting the Silver Harp, which I don't believe Smashy has found the Mountain Cave to be able to do so. And Centroid is close, 52 and 82, so he's got to go three steps west. And gets it. There's the armor. Yeah, big difference in defensive power from going from chain mail to Erdrick's armor. Yeah, so now 72 defense. So uh, the defense still a little bit low as well. As, I mean, as far as uh, enemies doing not as much damage to him, I mean, that's pretty much everything from a Wraith Knight and below, but that still leaves a good dozen enemies that pretty much are all in Charlotte Castle that would just obliterate him once he gets in there. So it's still going to be a couple more levels at least here. So maybe it's a matter if you're Centroid of doing what the tie-dye guy's doing here and just going after that Axe Knight is that's going to be the best grind spot from what we've seen thus far. And to answer DW Edit in chat, at this point, your analysis is pretty much spot on. Our runners want a enough stat gains. Hold on, Centroid has gained a level. Power 3, Speed 2, HP 4, Agility 5, if I counted all that right. Yep, the uh, well, the numbers were yeah the order of the numbers was right the the words eh they, people know the order of which things are going so yeah I mean five magic points as opposed to agility but yeah that, that's it's all in there right oh look a magic wyvern on Smashy's side and I guess it's trying to get on out of there since oh yeah no resources left at all um, and there is a possible gold grind to get the silver shield pyrolite but. None of our runners have opted to do it, and I think that's because the only silver shield that we had seen was inside the locked shop in Cantlin, which is quite a hike away. Well, our runners have already made the hike up there twice, once for Cantlin, once for Erdrick's armor. Why not a third time to get the best shield in the game? Well, given the defensive woes, I mean, it certainly wouldn't hurt. I mean, compared to the large shield uh, that Centroid has, I mean, that's a 10 defense difference, whereas the silver shield would be 20. So that's a 10 defense boost. That is a pretty significant difference, as in the case of Centroid, well, I mean, it's... Every little bit's going to help, especially against red dragons like that, especially if they're swamped through Charlotte Castle. Um, 
And as Pyrolite noting in chat, uh, with, yeah, with the agility being as low as it is, the Dragon Lord 2, even though he's known for his Dragon Lord breath, that even with Erdrick's armor does between 42 and 48 damage, with the defense and agility being so low, a base attack could be even more than 48 hit points, which throws off a lot of the calculations that you're used to doing. Centroid has entered Sherlock Castle. I will show the current stats again. Right now, all of our runners have chosen to use Strength HP builds at the start. At least amongst our featured four. 117 attack power is not ideal. We're going to need another level or two in order to really have a shot at this attack-wise. Magic point-wise, I think we're good, assuming we don't have to cast a lot of heal mores on the way down. Defensive power, though... Yeah... I would consider a silver shield. Also, speaking of defensive power, it's entirely possible that I had missed Smashy pick up some armor. Please help me out, chat, if I did. Well, not to mention the uh, the hit points. Uh, I mean, with a maximum of 90 at level 14, ideally you want to have a minimum of 97, so that way you can withstand two consecutive Dragon Lord to Fire Breaths, which can do a max of 48 each. But if your defense is so low that the Dragon Lord's attacking for more than 48 at a time, then that, that's where it throws off the calculations as you may have to wait until 100 hit points or 102 or 104. And they're not quite at that yet. So level 14 is definitely not going to be go mode. Uh, as DW Edit noted in chat a little bit ago, uh, at least Centroid and Tilo Tilo are in grinding go mode. What is the magic defensive power number to get in order to cap the Dragon Lord Breath at 48? That is an excellent question, and I thought I'd had that down somewhere, but I'm going to crunch those numbers and get back to you on that. Alright. In the meantime, that tie-dye guy is back in Hawk's Nest, probably going to grind on some more of the wizards and axe knights smashy is going to get coordinates tilo tilo is going against the axe knights as well and centroid is going to join we have an axe knight party folks And according to Sports Hefe in chat, it is it strictly the armor that caps a Dragon Lord 2 breath, or is it a magic number? Beta Strep believes it's 86 defense points. If that's the case, then none of our runners are there yet. Smashy does have the coordinates to get Erdrick's armor, though, so that'll help tremendously. Okay, so Beta Strep, you are saying that both Erdrick's armor and 86 defense is necessary for the cap to work. That 86 would be the correct number, yes. And, ooh, I just missed a level up, and the tie-dye the tie guy was looking at it. I'm comparing the numbers now. Wait a second. If I'm looking at this right, not as much of a gain as I was thinking. Never mind. I, th I think the tie-dye guy is going to have to go for it one more time because defensive power I think is at 76 right now when we need 78. 
Or 86, excuse me. We do have the HP gap cross, though, at 99. And a tie that I got using the stop spell on the Red Dragon, and it's proving very effective as he's been able to take the experience lead. And we're going to see what those stack gains were on Centroid's side as he's about to get to level 15. And we've got 3 power, 5 response speed, 9 hit points, 7 magic points, and that final spell of return. Yep. All spells accounted for. We don't have to worry about level 16 for spells, though we may have to worry about level 16 in order to make a proper dive to Sherlock. And yes, to answer the uh, the questions regarding the Dragon Lord Breath, the only way that it would be more than 48 would be if, for some reason, our runners went down into Sherlock and didn't have Erdrick's armor, as Erdrick's armor cuts the damage of the Fire Breath by one third. So without that, you're looking at a 64 to 72 hit point damage. So while the Erdrick's armor isn't required, it's highly recommended. And by highly recommended, I mean 99 out of 100 racers and that 100th happened to be drunk that day. Well, every little bit helps. <laughs> hmm, here's a shop I don't see our runners go for much, so... What is the tie die guy looking for? Looks like herbs. And Tila Tila, meanwhile, is uh, is hunting Axe Knights. So we've got 104 MP. So as far as the number of castings of Helamore, that's exactly at 13 if no other MP is used. Yeah, I, our runners definitely want to level up to at least 16, if not 17, for this one. Now, uh, to get to level 16, we are looking at 9,750 experience, which the tie-dye guy looks to be closest among them as he's uh, a little over a thousand away from that. Centroid is close behind, just about 200 and change EXP away from the tie-dye guy. Tilo Tilo is about a thousand behind Centroid and Smashy. Well, just went to level 13 at least. Yeah, Smashy did have some early struggles and a little bit of pause, but uh, that certainly is going to help here, as well as getting that sleep spell. Plus, Smashy is one of the newer runners to our community, so this is... Uh, uh, the, the fact that there's been that much improvement to get him a feature on here, it, it's... Even though he's behind some of the runners that are here at the moment, uh, there there have been a lot of strides that have been made as the tie dye guy now acquiring the rainbow drop as well, and is now just a little over a thousand experience away from level sixteen. But meanwhile, as he was acquiring that rainbow drop, the experience lead has gone back to Centroid, who's at ninety one eighty six. And thank you, Smashy, for that pause. We have updated uh, weapons and armor now for the viewers at home. See, Smashy is a racer for the people. Providing all the stat checks and everything. I mean, it, it, say what you will about the other stuff, but hey, it's, it's the little things that count. Like staying at Six Town here at uh, Breconary. Granted, that only counts for me, but uh, um, 
what can I say? I'm, I'm the one flapping my gums here. I'll throw those things out there. And, oof. Uh, looks like Smashy is getting slept and not quite wrecked by the Red Dragon. Joys of Stop Spell. There was a, a part of me that was fearing that after casting that Stop Spell, already being in very dangerous territory, that the Red Dragon would have decided to attack there and just send him back to the castle. Alright, level 16. I know I'm slightly ahead here. Power 1, Speed 1, Hit Points 13. Not what we're looking for. 121 and 76. So if they did that gold grind for the Silver Shield, that would put them up at 86. But that's a big if. It's all about that defense right now. Admittedly, a bit more strength would help too. Because right now, if we were to actually attack Dragon Lord, I'm sure I'm going to get the numbers wrong here, but 121, subtract 100, that's 21. We're talking a range from 5 to 10, I think, depending on how the rounding works. That is correct. Yeah, you're correct. It is 5 to 10. So if you, if the Dragon Lord, for example, has max at 165 hit points and you're swinging for max, even then that's, you're looking at 17 attacks. And that's if you max out. I mean, if you go minimum, you're talking five apiece. Oh gosh, higher level math here. Five into 165. You're looking at 33 attacks on the Dragon Lord. So yeah, I, I think Beta Strep sums it up in chat. Not great. So the grind continues. But first, we must get our rest. Oh! oh. Smashy has found the flute, the silver harp, and I believe the stones are, in, are here as well. Yes, yeah, Smashy has found the mountain cave which had the plethora of items. Uh, the fighter's ring, the fairy water, the f uh, fairy flute, the silver harp, and should he make it to the end here, these stones of sunlight as well. Okay, Centroid is purchasing torches, probably to make things a little easier for Sherlock, for a Sherlock dive without having to worry about spending MP on Radiant. So at least we have all the heal mores covered. Well, most of them, anyway. We do want some more offense and defense, though. Yeah, in crunching the numbers, the 76 defense, uh, if the Dragon Lord second form were to attack, that would be a damage range of 25 to 51 hit points. So you theoretically need a minimum of 103 to survive two attacks from Dragon Lord. And right now, that is... it's, it's still 76. <laughs> Uh, unless I was mixing up numbers here. Oh no, the defense is 76. I mean, as far as their max hit points, well, it's at 112, so... Mm, it's still not advisable. Level 17 is when you'll start to consider it. As long as, of course, level 17 is a, is a good level here. Well, that's why I said start to consider it. I mean, if you have awful level gains at level 17, then mm, going to 18. Unless you feel like going and throwing down the YOLO hurt more strats. Of 
course, if you go for that strategy, you basically have to, have to hope for two one out of 16 shots to hit. Exactly. As the defense to a hurt or hurt more spell by the Dragon Lord, it's, uh, as I said, it has 15 out of 16 resistance, so you have a 1 in 16 chance of hitting it, which, uh, it's about a 6 and a quarter percent chance. And then you figure if you got to do that twice, you're looking at, gosh, uh, 1 out of 256, that is... A roughly just uh, about about four tenths of a percent chance. Not very bloody likely. Sounds like I would have better luck going to my local grocery store and playing the lottery. Exactly. Although it's a little bit late to do so at this point, as the drawing I believe will be commenced. Uh, never mind. Uh, and then enough of promoting. <laughs> Here, although I'm sure you've seen those names. <laughs> uh, check your local listings for details, folks. <laughs> exactly. And something else to definitely check out here in chat, thanks to Game Boy F9, the third annual Dragon Warrior Randomizer Tournament. That is coming up. We are not too terribly far away from it here. And I believe there is still time to register. Yes, there is. It'll start on Monday, July 30th. So that is just 12 days away, just under two weeks from now, and the open registration is going on, and my goodness, we have quite a few racers already, 34 registered as we speak, and it's going to be a five-round Swiss tournament, and uh, depending on the uh, records, uh, yeah, as long as you win well enough, you'll automatically uh, qualify and possibly even earn a buy, and... Then from there, you may have some plain races, even if you're a little below 500. But all the details are available at the dq.challenge.com slash dwr2018 link that you can see there in chat. All right. During that promotion, Centroid has been promoted to level 17, but I did not see much gained out of it. It looked like... The highest gain, if anything, was on MP. Which there already was a decent amount of. Exactly. So, so to get to level 17, it's 12,000 experience. So the tie-dye guy is just, at this point, just shy of two Axe Knights away from it. Now how about level 18? Are we at the part where it's just gonna add like 3,000 or so? Level 18 is a difference of 2,250 to go from 17 to 18. 18 to 19 is the same, and then starting from level 19 to 20 is where you go 3,000 experience per level. Thank you. So we're not quite there yet. I knew Oh we were... my goodness. <laughs> 11,009 for to tie dye guy, so now it's definitely going to do it here. Wow. I mean, that's impressive that you got so close to level 17, but now you learn, gotta do it again. And Sukiya, yeah, Sukiya, I did catch that, but uh, Centroid has to uh, shrug off another Red Dragon destruction. Yeah, not, with no strength gains there, that it's essentially guaranteeing that we're going to 18, because they only have 121 strength still, so you're still looking at that 5 to 10 attack range. And don't worry, Game Boy, this is not like the seed from a couple of weeks ago that was uh, mentioned in the Discord, uh, where, yeah, you had to close at level 24, those, those strength gains, I mean, we at least had a couple of double-digit strength gains thus far here in this seed. They just came early and have been very sporadic since then. Yeah, I am very thankful that I did not restream uh, 
that match two weeks ago. <laughs> Well, thankfully, that wasn't a match. I think that was uh, one of our individual runners. Um, I'll throw him out there, give him a little bit of a uh, plug for having to endure that. Uh, WMD88, uh, who had uh, who had decided for the first time to try out a seed and just happened to have an extremely unlucky roll, and the strength gains were minimal and minimal at best. I believe there might be an underscore with uh, the WMD, uh, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. I can quickly confirm that. Prob probably what is typed in Twitch chat right now. Yes, you! I didn't even know you were in chat! <laughs> See, you mentioned uh, it, that's okay. We mentioned the name three times. It's just like Beetlejuice. All of a sudden, he appeared. We were talking about your plight from a couple of weeks ago and your inaugural seed of Dragon Warrior Randomizer. Well, certainly did a lot better than my first run at this. <laughs> I do eventually need to try this again, though. I don't. I'm probably just going to stick to the uh, restream commentary tracking booth instead of fighting out there. I I am a background warrior, not a foreground warrior. There are no rogue positions in Dragon Warrior. Except for the rogue scorpion. Rogue scorpions are their own set of evil. We don't talk about them. <laughs> Ah, uh, that is true. That that most certainly is true. So, working toward level 18, that's going to be 14,250 is the target experience number for that. So, Centroid at this point is about 435 away from that. And then trailing by almost that exact amount is the tie-dye guy. I had missed, uh, Smashy going up to level 14, but certainly making some stat gains at- Oh, hello! Tilo Tilo has said, enough is enough, let's grind during Sherlock. Oh, gonna take one of those informational dives, perhaps. Well, and just try to see what there is on the way down. I mean, that's not a bad strategy, although 16 we've seen, mm, it's a little bit ambitious. And now we see here power 9, response speed 9, 0 hit points, and 3 magic points. Empty Eye, we're going to have a word with you. But so 130 we... attack, 82 defense, that's... and 114 apiece on the HP and MP. It's pretty close. He's crunching the numbers. He's going for it. He, he's casting return. And in the meantime, so far we've seen a blue dragon and... a golem in Sh Sherlock. Tilo Tilo is only at 17, though. And well, he just, he just was grinding on the way down and realized, uh, nope, not quite there yet. And I guess given how far we are in this seed here, I mean, we're closing in on the 90-minute mark. None of our racers have even considered or contemplated the gold grind to get up to the Silver Shield. As considering how they're hurting for defense, they certainly could use that extra 10 defense points as the agility is fairly on the low side. Uh, Beta Strip is asking about stats, considering that right now we're just looking for level ups and dives in Sherlock. They are displayed on screen right now for you. So there we go 84 agility and 88 strength at level 18. 
I love this feature, by the way. It is extremely, uh, yeah, it's not, as, as Game Boy F9 notes, it's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. Uh, I mean, if if they had that silver shield, you'd be looking at 92 defense right now, and that would mean that they'd be able to withstand the attacks of a good portion of the enemies that could be in Sherlock here. I mean, with 92, they'd be able to handle anything from the werewolf, the wizard, the star wyvern, and the green dragon. And eh, really the only enemies that they'd have issues with would be anything from the Axe Knight on up. The Axe Knights, the Blue Dragons, the Stone Men, the Armored Knights, the Golems, and the Red Dragons. Speak of the Red Dragons. So far, Centroid getting slept. And wrecked. Four rounds, and a fifth round, and wrecked. Oh no. This is why the Red Dragon is known as the Fun Police, folks. And as far as off-stream runners, we have seven off-stream runner, uh, runners, Falconic FF. Uh, along with the four that you see featured here, we have Zarnax42, JJ Schmidt77, Yunos, we have BT, as well as Sparkover, uh, Tyranex, and Papa Foy's making his race debut. We always enjoy it when new warriors head into the fray. If you wish to consider it yourself, there will be a Discord link where you can learn about the randomizer yourself. And by all means, please join the tournament if you wish. It's all in good fun. You may end up performing better than you expect. Yeah, there are the occasional upsets and whatnot, as well as, even without the tournament here, there are a litany of different runners in the community who, I mean, they, they have a races flag that pretty much, they'll be asking for races at any point if anybody wants to hop in on uh, on SRL and involve themselves and, uh, and and get a race going. Just just for fun, a little friendly race, but also to kind of see how you do on a particular seed and each seed has its own intricacies. I mean, so there are some where you get spells early and don't get attack power for a really long time. There are some where you have a massive amount of strength, but your defense is ridiculously low. Uh, and as Game Boy F9 notes, it's the uh, roughly the only tournament where the flags are constant all tournament long. So it's not... Uh, yeah, they, they've really been the same since the first Dragon Warrior randomizer tournament back in 2016 and the only offshoot of that was a bit of a spin-off that had occurred earlier this year in what was called the chaos mode and that has a lot more wild adventurous things and i was able to commentate a good portion of that tournament where uh, among everything else the enemy statistics were randomized so their hit points their magic points, or I'm sorry, their hit points, their strength, their agility, the experience and gold that they gave, all were randomized as well, plus the prices in the weapon shop, so that, that was where things got really crazy. But as far as this annual tournament, which this is the third annual one now, that, uh, yes, that, that it has been consistent, and Game Boy noting a disclaimer that in chat that is very noted as well, that runners can agree to change the flags a little bit, but it's very uncommon. And I think he's referencing a couple of rather masochistic runners who have used the uh, the Big Swamp uh, format, where 75% of the ground in the overworld is that swamp tile that takes away two damage per step. Um, while we were talking about that, that tie-dye guy has suddenly shot into the lead and we just never noticed. Well, we, I mean, the, the lead is never safe when it comes to Sherlock Castle. But yes, the tie-dye guy is on the seventh and final floor of Sherlock Castle and is making his way toward the Dragon Lord. But first, who is the Guardian? Yes, there is Why a spike tie here on the first brick, <laughs> and it, of course, it's the Red Dragon. Why not?
So, I'm going to put the stats up on screen once more so we can perform some final calculations here. Strength of 88, actual attack power of 130. Defense power 82. Has a lot of MP available for heal mores. So... It's possible, depends on where the attack rolls land. Well, right now with 130, there's a damage range of 7 to 15 per attack. And as far as the Dragonlord 2 attacking, you're looking at a range uh, of... You're getting hit anywhere between 25 to 51 hit points on the attack. And then, of course, with that Dragonlord breath, it's a guaranteed 42, 44, 46, or 48. And uh, Beta Strep, that, uh, that Guardian, it, that's a spike tile. So just like in Hawk's Nest, how you can keep respawning it over and over again, you can do the same thing there just before the Dragonlord. And speak of which, we are on Dragonlord 2 now. Oh, and he's got a heal more right off the bat. So he hits for 13, that's on the higher end of the roll. There's a nice low attack there, may be able to get a double out of it, so there's 10 there. And meanwhile, off stream, we have our first place finisher, Zarnax42, with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 30 minutes, and 55 seconds. Considering how uh, nasty the enemies were in this seat, that's very impressive. Oh, and there's a single-digit attack for eight. So we're back to the double digits with ten there. So up to 67 if my count's right here. Although I'll admit I did glance over, so... We've got another 14 that puts us up to 81. I will admit I missed it myself, um... Unfortunately, uh, newcomer Papa Foy's has been defeated a bit too much with the Dragon Lord, and th its cronies has chosen to drop from the race. Well, it was only, uh, as mentioned, it was only his, this is his first race, and I believe only second ever seed. So that's uh, you know a gallant effort nonetheless here. As we got a nice double attack here, puts up to 128. Still a couple of heal mores left. Going to attack here with a low roll of 7 that puts it up to 135. Going to have to use another heal more here. Ooh, and a big attack of 48. He's going to go for it on 48. That was risky. Oh, that was risky. He's now down to his last set of attacks here. Another 7 that puts him up to 154. So as long as he gets 11 or more, he gets it with 10. So somewhere between 155 and 164. He didn't have the max, but the tie-dye guy is going to do it here. And just mere seconds before finishing up here, Yunos is going to take second with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 32 minutes, and 28 seconds off stream. And with that, get your GGs out in chat, folks. That tie-dye guy has finished with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 33 minutes, 15 seconds. So that is the first of our featured runners and third overall here. Just a mere two minutes and 20 seconds behind the first place finisher. In the meantime, Smashy has picked up Erdrick's sword. And the rainbow drop. So, smash it with a nice rebound after a bit of a rough start early on. As now Centroid is in Sherlock, it looks like, and heading on down here.
And it looks like he's going to fight his way to 19 as he's just 70 experience away. So even if Centroid runs from all the different enemies uh, along the way and just gets to that spike tile with the red dragon, then that'll get him to level 19 and hopefully build a little bit more of a cushion as we don't know what 19 awaits. Actually, Tilo Tilo has just got level 19, so I can compare some numbers now. Looks like 15 magic, at least... Holy moly, this is a 19 strength increase. Oh, so th this is one at Centroid. That, that's going to definitely do it. As uh, Meanwhile, Spark over off stream, finishing fourth. Uh, just a mere 50 seconds behind the tie-dye guy at 1 hour 34 minutes and 5 seconds. And speak of the tie-dye guy, it looks like we have him joining us here in the Discord chat. GG, the tie-dye guy. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that, that was a fun seed. It certainly had its uh, its challenges early, especially with the litany of enemies that had sleep. Oh, for sure, yeah. That definitely, there were some stumbling blocks out of the gate, but once he got, uh, you know, starting off with heal more helped, and then once he got hurt more, things really started sailing then. And now here, yeah, it looks like level 19 had uh, 19, 4, 3, and 16 as far as the stat gains. As uh, Centroid uh, just getting to level 19 as uh, as is Tilo Tilo. Uh, they're, well, right now Centroid is talking to the Dragon Lord and Tilo Tilo is uh, just heading into the first basement of 7. Uh, and DW Edit asking in chat, how about those red slimes? But was there something special about them? I forget. <laughs> well, early on they had hurt, and that's I think some of the uh, the stumbling blocks out of the gate that you were referencing, as they were casting hurt pretty often when nobody had a weapon, armor, or anything to begin. So that led to a lot of early deaths. Oh, that's true. Yeah, but again, at least you you could survive one hurt and then hopefully heal and then unless they just chain hurts on you hopefully you can get through at least one fight then go back to the old man and get your magic back and go out for another run but it was definitely time consuming you're right so that was uh, that was certainly challenging and then there of course there was the uh, plethora of wealth items inside the mountain cave that was the hot spot of the race to say the least having the fairy flute the silver harp the stones of sunlight and the fighter's ring as well. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm glad I never had a chance to dive into the cave either. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm glad I didn't waste my time going in there at all. Did anyone um, gold grind to get the silver shield? Speaking of which, uh, none of the featured runners on stream did. Okay, good. Because I, I was afraid because our, you know, the defense being so low, and you know, normally they could. I think the Dragon Lord can still melee you for over 48 damage with our defense without the shield. So I was a little cautious around that, but hoping I wasn't going to seal the deal for me. I'm glad it didn't. Well, we have the few of the racers also joining us in chat. Papa Foys, who uh, made his race debut here and, uh, again, only second ra uh, run overall. Uh, didn't know how to find the overworld item, but... Um, uh, again, that's what the Discord's for. They'll be able to help. Uh, there's a whole training room section in the uh, in the Discord that you can go over things like that if, if you're new to it. So, yeah, I mean, everybody was new once at some point. As Centroid just finishing up with the Dragon Lord, and he's going to make his way back to the castle. And uh, Zarnax, our first place finisher, noting uh, that he was sweating, and not just because it's the middle of summer here. That was certainly a, uh, a, a rough... Rough go, and wow, just like that, a couple more finishes here. So, JJ Schmidt, 77, going to sneak in at fifth place with one hour, 38 minutes, and 13 seconds, and just 30 seconds behind our second featured runner here. Get out your GGs for Centroid for finishing in sixth place overall and second among our featured runners with an official SRL time of one hour, 38 minutes, and 43 seconds. So it looked like as far as the uh, the grind spot, it seemed like everybody's item of choice was the uh, the Axe Knight in Hawk's Nest. 
Oh, Axe Knights are so choice, especially with Cole right there with the end. Yeah, uh, it was easy grinding there. No problem there. It was just more so the long grind, as uh, it looks like the level of choice to go looks to be 19, given that, uh, yeah, given that there was so much going on. Uh, Spark over noting that uh, she had died to the mini boss first time in Sherlock by sleep, so that was rude. And then second time, she just went zoom. Yeah, the, I, I had a feeling that red dragon was going to pop up somewhere with that wombo combo. Well, there are a couple of enemies with that. You had the Drakema, the Demon Knight, and the Red Dragon, all with Sleep and Hurt more. Yeah, I was I was afraid the Red Dragon was just going to be in the castle throughout, and then just you'd be making half a dozen runs before you even make it to the Dragon Lord to even try and fight him. But I don't know, I didn't see him. I'm not sure if other people saw him in there or not. They made the occasional appearance as Tilo Tilo now is uh, working on the second form of the Dragon Lord. I forget. But yeah, as I, I count here, there were six different enemies with sleep the Drakema, the Metal Scorpion, the Demon Knight, the Star Wyvern, the Wizard, and the Red Dragon. And there were a bunch with Hurtmore as well, including the Armored Knight, the AK 47. Yeah, he wasn't too bad, though, thankfully. I only ran into him a few times. But yeah, 18 was close. 19, yeah, definitely seems like the more comfortable level to uh, go out the Dragon Lord at. I was on my last hit, and I already had to hit twice on the 47 and 48 hit points. So yeah, 19 definitely seemed like the safer bet. Yeah, that was, I mean, there, there was a, a pretty gutsy move in there that uh, you were hit for 48, and you had 48 hit points, and decided to go despite the fact that there could have either been a max... Dragon Lord two breath, or uh, I mean, because of that defense being so low, I mean, the, the Dragon Lord certainly could have attacked for anywhere from, I believe it was uh, twenty five to fifty one. Yeah, but I figured, you know, with it being the way it was, you know, either someone has the silver shield and is already diving, or I got to push through. And I, I think I started to see people finish. I was like, well, it's either now or never. So <laughs> I rolled the dice. And I'm glad it rolled up well. Well, glad that they came up uh, sevens, or at least in this case, threes for you as uh, third place here in the race tonight and first among our featured runners. Congratulations. Uh, we're going to, uh, I was going to say, any other uh, thoughts here? We're going to uh, move things along otherwise to uh, to Centroid who just joined us in chat. Uh, any final thoughts there, the tie-dye guy? No, I mean, it was my first race in a while since the Chaos Tournament. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, some of that is carrying over to this. But, uh, yeah, I'll bow out. Um, thank you, Random Mania, for hosting, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to start doing this again more normally. Thank you. Absolutely. Tournament just a little less than two weeks away, and Tilo Tilo finishing as we spoke here in seventh place overall, third among our featured runners with an official SRL time of one hour, 42 minutes, and 11 seconds. And joining us here is Centroid. Centroid, uh, uh, congrats and GG. Uh, uh, Pretty close sixth place finish. I mean, uh, you were just uh, just a, a half a minute behind JJ Schmidt for fifth. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about uh, about what was going on with uh, with the seed. Anything that might have been particularly troublesome for you, and things of that nature. Oh well, I think he stepped out for a moment here and. From what I see here, just uh, subscribe to the Randomania with a, uh, a Tier 1 sub. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, putting his money where his mouth is, I suppose. Thank you for supporting Randomania, your home for randomized games. In the meantime, Tilo Tilo also wishes to come in for an interview. Let's, let's try to drag him and Centroid as well. Uh, in the interim, uh, it looks like there's some assessments going on in chat here. Uh, uh, Sparkover noting that her splits from her first uh, run were level 13 Axe Knight and 19 Dragon Lord, and uh, never beat those uh, until her current time. So, yeah, she was, I guess, trying to race herself in that regard. 
Uh, looks like there was one metal slime that had run away. I think Smashy had got one here in chat. Uh, and Zarnax noting he had found a metal slime in the swamp cave and it took him out, went back for another and had enough hit points to survive and low enough strength that it wouldn't run. So uh, that being a, uh, an added advantage, if your strength is low enough, the metal slime is guaranteed to not run away. And all you have to do is hit it for three hit points and it'll give you that max 255 experience. And Centroid, uh, okay, the, uh, it required push to talk, which, uh, okay, so there was uh, some behind-the-scenes technical issues that kept Centroid from joining us in chat, but Tilo Tilo has joined us in chat here, our uh, seventh-place finisher tonight. Uh, congrats and GG. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, any uh, any thoughts here about the, uh, the, the seed here that uh, that jumped out at you here? Well, for me, the big thing was that uh, I got a, had a whole bunch of encounters near the bottom of uh, the mountain cave that got me wiped right before getting the Stone of the Sunlight. And I decided to take my chances that that was not an important treasure chest and go explore the rest of the world. Um, and of course, Garenham was quite far away. And you find the jerk there. I had everything else, but didn't have the stones. And so knowing I had to go back from there, I knew I was probably playing from behind. Uh, that's right. Because, I mean, we had even noted here in chat, we were like, well, we saw that he had the silver harp. And, I mean, I, I, I thought, I was, I was like, I don't think that he had gotten all the way down to the stones. And I said, unless he had gotten killed just before getting there and never went back. And that turned out to be the case. And it was one of those... Uh, one of those risky roles that uh, just happened to not turn up, uh, not turn up in your favor in that regard. Yeah, I'm actually happy it set me back as little as it did. Well, fortunately, the mountain cave wasn't too far from the castle, so that made it at least a little bit better. Yeah, other than that, the big thing is just the uh, fun police were out in full force uh, today and causing me all sorts of problems just trying to grind that axe knight. Yeah, the red dragon was being beyond brutal with the uh, combination of sleep and hurt more. That actually kept me from deciding to dive at 18. I think mathematically I would have been f favored to win slightly, uh, but I didn't think there was any way I'd be able to get down to the Dragon Lord through whatever red dragons came my way, so I figured I needed to grind to the next level, and obviously level 19 uh, gave you enough to do pretty much anything. Yeah, 19 was the definitive level. There were a few. I know that the tie-dye guy went on 18. Uh, I think Centroid, who... Uh, oh, is back in with us here. Uh, Centroid, I think you got up to 19 before going down. That made it considerably... Uh, uh, considerably easier by comparison. Yeah, I, I tried diving at 18 and uh, uh, did the, what, what do you call it, the fight fight your way down technique and uh, got my level 19 way at the bottom and uh, was very grateful for all those attack powers. Uh, it was very, very helpful. So having a little bit of uh, a little bit of technical issues there, uh, we did notice that you had, um, yeah, that, that you had. Fearon. Alrighty. Well, as the uh, as there are some technical issues being worked out here, Smashy meanwhile is continuing to grind in Hawk's Nest and is battling between the Red Dragons and the Axe Knights that are there. And JJ Schmidt noting in chat that he threw away a lot of time on a good grind with no town spotted, uh, but he found a metal slime to help that a little bit as well. 
For those that wish to see other randomizers in action, on Random Mania 2, we have a Legend of Zelda randomizer battle royale taking place right now, actually. We had an unexpected slot open, so it's being filled. We will transfer over there after Smashy either finishes this seed or stops, whichever comes first. Well, okay, either finishes, stops, or it hits about 11.15 p.m. Eastern Time. One of the three. So there we go. Things changing uh, second by second. You never know how things are, uh, are going to go here. Now, in the meantime, Smashy did get up to level 17, does have Erdrick's armor, Erdrick's sword, and the large shield. So, it's basically a matter of you know, choosing when to dive and how long to keep grinding. Alright, well, I think I'm uh, gonna head out. It's uh, great to be back. I've been gone for quite a while between IRL stuff and uh, the Final Fantasy Randomizer tournament, and I'm excited to be back and excited for the tournament. Yes, looking forward to that just a little under two weeks away, and uh, I'll be looking forward to being behind the mic to provide a good portion of the action here among the Randomania networks. Right. Now, I'd thrown a question uh, out there in chat to uh, those who aren't necessarily joining us in here. I was looking to see if perhaps any uh, any of the other runners had done a gold grind for the Silver Shield. I do not know of... I haven't seen any responses yet, Firon. But considering... That was just a curious question. I mean... I mean, as we established earlier, you have to spend a key in Cantlin in order to get to that shop. I don't know how many runners do that often. True, it's, it's one of those risk-reward things, and probably nobody did, but I'm just curious to see other people's mindsets. So... We have two remaining runners here. We're not going to change layouts tonight, but Smashy and Tyranex are the remaining two. I will at least... Right, in the, in the hustle and bustle here, I, I, I missed about five minutes ago, BT finishing in eighth place with a time of one hour, 47 minutes and 10 seconds. So GG to BT on that. Smashy, meanwhile, is back onto the Axe Knights at an even 13,000 experience. Another 12.50 to go. Now make that another 11.20 to go to get to level 18. And I can confirm Tyranex is in Sherlock. Oh, wow. Now, uh, Centroid, uh, uh, I was going to say, you still with us here, Centroid? I know there were uh, some technical issues. Uh, just wanted to see whether or not they were resolved uh, and see that you're still here in the chat with us. Yeah, I, I am still here. Uh, I was wondering, can you can you guys hear me with uh, Push to Talk? We can, yes. Yeah, I thought, I thought the seed for me just kind of, it kind of, everything just fell into place until the very end. Um, where it was, I got on a decent grind. I thought that Axe Knight was a lot more efficient than that Armor Knight would have been in the Swamp Cave. Um, and then I guess the, the main decision was, you know, just when do you abandon the grind and make your dive? And I'm, I'm kind of wishing now I would have stayed till 19, but I guess, I guess that's just part of the randomizer, right? You never know what that next level is going to get. And I had, I think 16 or 7, 16 might have had like some low... Uh, uh, like 16 and 17 had some zeros in some categories. So after a while, you get kind of tired of the zeros and 
You're just like, well, I can technically win, so I might as well try for it, right? And in a lot of the race scenarios, that gutsy decision to go for it a level earlier than you're probably comfortable with, it's a high risk, high reward scenario. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think leaving uh, Hawksness at 18 really killed me that much because I think uh, every, everybody was significantly, um, I, I guess, in good position to win anyway. So if I would have spent that time grinding at 19, I probably would have seen, you know, like four finishes maybe on my way over to Charlotte or something. So, I mean, I guess it is what it is and uh, just, you know, uh, I'm, I'm still kind of new to the randomizer. So it's, it's fun to see these you know, these, these choices you can make. Well, as I noted earlier, we're, we're all new at some point. So uh, it's, it's definitely something to just take learning experiences from as uh, Smashy now up to level 18. And looks like death warping back to the castle here. And we'll see if Smashy is going to go here at 18. Looks like it. However, Tyranex is already on the, the final floor of Sherlock. As Smashy is just entering Sherlock and is on the main lobby floor. Having to make his way down to, uh, to quite a few different ones here. I was going to say, how much disappointment was there initially getting to Hawk's Nest and realizing, uh, there's nothing here? Um, well, I guess I knew it was like a 50-50 at that point. Um, so, because luckily what that, um, I think the toke, the flute, the flute was in it. I can't remember which one was in a chest because I did another practice seat earlier in the day, but I, I think the token was in the chest, right? Um, uh, the flute was in the was a, the part of the festival of riches that was in the mountain cave, uh, and the token was in coal. That's right. Okay. Yeah the the mountain cave had what the the flute and the death necklace I think. Um, well, the death necklace that you had from the start. The mountain cave had the fighter's ring, the fairy flute, the silver harp, and the stones of sunlight. Oh right, yeah. Although, yeah, so I mean, I knew I knew at that point it was just kind of like, okay, well, I can, it, I, I, I could just look for Cantlin and skip like, because I left uh, two two chests in the gra uh, grave of Garenhan. I just completely skipped Erdrich's cave because I wanted to focus on that armor. Um, I, I thought like, I can go look for the sword later. And um, I just got kind of got lucky. Like I was, I got Gwaylin and the coordinates and then like, you know, I was on my way to go pick up the armor and I'm like, you know, I haven't explored this little area over here. So I just kind of ducked over there and like, well, sure enough, there was the, uh, the, um, there was Garenham, which had the rainbow drop cave, right? And, and the sword, I think, in the, that yeah, last door. So, yeah, I mean, that certainly was uh, that was a fortunate thing, I mean, especially given that the coordinates were so far out that it was pretty much princess required. Yeah, that, num that 85 was kind of like too much, especially with the it was kind of winding around a little bit. I, th I think like 40s and 50s aren't too terrible. Um, I, it just it just really depends on the terrain and stuff. This one was definitely... You'll be glad that you skipped out on the uh, Erdrich's Tablet Cave as all it had was a curse bell. Nothing wrong with that there. And uh, I don't know what was in the uh, the, the deep into the Garen's Grave as uh, none of our featured runners here uh, went that far in. Most of it yeah. was the top three chests, and that had a couple of money things and uh, magic key. All right, Smashy is approaching the fun police for hopefully the final time.
And meanwhile, uh, let's see what's going on here with Tyranex. Tyranex is about to dot done. Uh, making the uh, the walk of pride up to the king. That is correct. All right, and there is the red dragon taken away, and for the ideally and hopefully last time tonight, we will have a runner be called a fool as uh, Tyranex finishing in ninth with an official time just under the two-hour mark at one hour, 59 minutes, and 49 seconds. Smashy is at level 18. Stats are shown on screen for what is likely the final time. The results of this battle will determine whether we quickly shoot over to Randomania 2 or if we see another attempt from Smashy. I do not believe we will have time for a proper interview, though. Understandable, so we shall see how it goes here. As that 7 to 15 attack range and the Dragon Lord potentially attacking for anywhere from 25 to 51. For frame of reference, Tyranex did finish at level 18. So, and we also had that tie dye guy also finish at level 18. So, this is doable. Certainly has enough heal mores to go for it, I believe. So it's, it comes down to luck at this point. That and making sure to not accidentally do a hurt more when you m mean to do a heal more. Yes, those miskeyed inputs, uh, they have certainly factored in on occasion with various races. And you see there the Dragon Lord attacking for 49. So that's... One of those factors that you don't plan in. That's one of the uh, the higher rolls as far as the Dragon Lord attack. Yeah, that is correct. 82 defensive power does not stop the. Uh, it, it's not enough for the cap. 86 is that number. So we're not quite there yet. But now I know for commentators' notes in the future to be able to start calculating attack ranges by the Dragon Lord depending on your defense. So I'll have to have that for next time around, and that certainly can assist with the tournament coming up. As Dragon Lord hitting for 49 once again. As for me, I will keep on enjoying using this uh, stat revealing tool. <laughs> And it is certainly helpful as well. So that is the last heal more for Smashy. So only a couple of attacks left. And he is going to do it. So Smashy will finish here. Not too far over the two hour mark. Indeed. Then so comes the walk of pride for Smashy. And get out your GGs in chat as Smashy is going to finish in 10th and 4th among our runners here with an official SRL time of 2 hours, 3 minutes, and 10 seconds. Get your GGs out in chat, everyone. Smashy has concluded this race and should feel proud. Dragon Lord is never easy. I don't care what anyone else says. And just a couple of quick notes before we throw things on over to our sister station, Randomania 2. Uh, as far as other noted matchups here among the Randomania networks, uh, coming up Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern is the Super Mario Brothers 3 Randomizer Weekly. Also, usually on Sundays and Tuesdays in, in the evening, you have the Legend of Zelda Randomizer Battle Royale, or at least that uh, looks to be what's coming up here. Uh, as well as on Monday nights at 9.30, the Final Fantasy IV Free Enterprise Weekly. That's usually Mondays around 9.30 p.m. Eastern. 
So make sure to give all of our runners a follow here. They've been fantastic. Uh, Centroid, as well as Smashy, Tilo Tilo, and Tie-Dye Guy. Uh, big thanks to my co-commentator, restreamer, and tracker. Kind of doing uh, doing all the work behind the scenes here and doing it so well in Wolfman 2000. Uh, for everybody behind the scenes and in front of it as well, I'm Ferran Burgundy saying until next time, may your moves be excellent and your seeds stay classy. We're now going to throw you on over to Randomania 2 where we have the Legend of Zelda Randomizer Battle Royale Quad Force Duos Grand Finale already in progress here on the Randomania Networks. Good day, everyone. And uh, until next time, watch out for Dragon Lord Breath.